going. All right, where are we? Where's the cat uh, poker guest? No, three the, sisters guest. Three house. sisters guest house. And I just snagged this little lizard off of that tree back there. I wish I could tell you the species, but it's got to be some kind of iguana type thing. All right, all right, I know. You're probably wondering, who's this handsome biologist looking guy, and why doesn't he know what kind of lizard that is? I thought this was a nature documentary. Well, you're not wrong. My name's Gavin Schwala, and I'm an aspiring filmmaker studying wildlife biology at Paul Smith College. So get comfy and enjoy this pioneer journey of mediocre filmmaking as I take you on a wildlife extravaganza from the jungles of Nepal to the Himalayas. And as for that lizard, you'll just have to watch to find out. Our journey begins in the capital of Nepal. Kathmandu isn't the most ideal place for wildlife, yet there are those who thrive here, like pigeons, house crows, and friendly street vendors. But the wildlife isn't why we came to Kathmandu. Our mission, our, our mission, excuse me, I'm trying to narrate here. National College, here we come. Our mission as a class is to start a working relationship with Kathmandu National College. It's the first step in a global dialogue that hopefully one day will become a strong force on both the environmental and social frontiers. We plant baby trees, connecting our two schools and countries through nature, reminding us that we are all bound to the earth. Pollution's starting to get to me. Poverty's starting to break my heart a little bit. Kamandu is rich in culture. Sadly though, it's hard at times to overlook the poverty and pollution. All the burning trash and vehicle emissions make the air nearly unbreathable. There is a safe haven though, where an animal, not unlike you and I, is revered. Buddhist uh, religion, uh, heritage site and it is located at the heart of Kathmandu and people of all religion whether it be Hindu, Christian, Buddhist all come here to worship and it's a very secular place and you can see a lot of 
seen from here. <laughs> That's it. It looks over the all of Kathmandu. Yeah, and too. it has the eyes uh, which faces all the sides. So it says, uh, like, it looks over you uh, no matter what. So good, do good. Yeah. And the was it left? The eyes represent compassion and. Yeah. What was the other? Uh, compassion, right. love, and then. Compassion, love, and enlightenment. Yeah. Or your moral compass yeah. for your third eye. Legend has it that the lice from the head of Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of wisdom, fell to the temple creating monkeys. Because of their holiness, the Rhesus macaque populations near Suayambu has grown to immense numbers. You can see, especially on the baby monkeys, how big their hands are, how perfectly adapted they, their limbs and their hands are for climbing in the trees. It's a beautiful thing to see a place where wildlife is respected and considered holy. If we just worked a little respect and understanding for our wildlife into our day to day, we'd live much healthier lives. However, like most things in nature, it's a balance. And when animals become habituated to human interaction, it can go from holy sites to danger zone in an instant. It's, it's mostly light. You have food in your hand. Mm -hmm. They come, they grab, and they go. They just steal it from Yeah, you. they just steal. And only Nasty some monkeys. monkeys. Yeah. And once my aunt, uh, she, the ba monkey took her bag. He was in the top, and he was trying lipstick, phone, <laughs> everything from the bag. And everyone wow. was like, Oh, okay, I catching, got it. Catching yes. At least he gave some stuff back, right? Yeah. yeah. And, Action! And nice effect. <laughs> Started up from the mountains. And I'm like, A horse! Hey! Ah. Look at the horse! An elusive Nepali stallion. Exhibit A. What <laughs> As awesome as Kathmandu is, we're all itching to get into the wilderness. And trusted with our lives, our guides from Three Sisters Adventure Trekking lead us into the subtropical rainforest of the Annapurna Conservation Area. This is where the fun begins. Not even like 10 minutes into our hike, and we've just seen how many species. Of birds we, we've at least seen four different species. At least four different species of birds. Right here. Goaty spotted it. He found a great spot. There. We got little flies. It looks like stone or some type of some type of bug. I'm not quite sure. Everywhere. Everywhere, and they're just plucking them out of the air. It's insane. It's like a dog fight. We've got bead, bee eaters, barbets. Woodpecker. Woodpecker, woodpecker. There, oh, oh, there, there he is. is. That is absolutely beautiful. Nepal holds the highest biodiversity of avian species in the world. 900 species have been recorded in the country, and that's about 10% of the world's bird species in one little country. Now, you non-ecologically interested viewers might be saying, wow, that's a lot of bird poop on my car. But for those of you asking why, the answer is actually quite simple. 
because of the immense elevation gradient caused by the Himalayan mountains. 50 million years ago when the Indian continent slammed into the Eurasian continent, unique habitats were allowed to form, allowing animals to inhabit tropical, subtropical forests, rhododendron forests, all the way to alpine meadows and snowy rock faces. Like, no, I'm sorry. That's that bluebird that was sitting in the top. Maybe. I could have swear it was more brown than gray. Right? Yeah. But that's what was sitting on top. Was it? I would say so, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It was good on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pale blue. Doing it live. Oh. Done for the day. Ow. The biodiversity of fauna here is supported by the plant species that make up these incredible environments. However, this is where, sadly, my expertise fades and where having a tree nerd for a friend comes in handy. I'm an environmental science major with a completed minor in chemistry and a minor in progress in botany. Catherine Gale from Paul Smith College, everyone. Beep. Oh, there's a leaf blocking your face, Catherine. It there we go. Not my face, the leaf. But of course. Um, so, Catherine, what are we in right now? We're currently in a fig tree. What kind of fig tree? That's a really hard question to answer. Nepal has a lot of fig trees. So much so that my book about trees in Nepal has pages dedicated to a chart full of fig trees and how to distinguish them because it's that hard. So I cannot tell you exactly what the fig is. I can tell you that the genus is Phytus. And we have... But there are two figs in Nepal that are sacred, the Banyan and the Paipal. And Pali believes that Buddha was sitting underneath the Paipal when he achieved enlightenment. And the Banyan tree is also worshipped. They do little wedding ceremonies where the trees get married. And I think that is awesome. Because trees can love. In Nepal, tree love. Can you feel the tree love? I'm feeling the tree love. You are into okay. a tree of love. Look at the tree loves itself so much. In, in the... It grew back into itself. <laughs> On the wildlife side of things, figs are a keystone species, providing a food source for many animals such as monkeys, birds, and just about whatever else can get a hold of them. Nepal is cool because of the very intense elevation changes. There's so many different biomes when it comes to tree species that you can go from being in a subtropic as we are right now and a bunch of figs and hike for three hours and end up in a somewhat alpine region with pines and rhododendrons and silver ferns. Silver ferns. That's not sexy. No. I think it's safe to say that after four hours of trekking through humid, hilly terrain that we're all a little overly tired. Some more than others. Guten Tag. You don't wrap your phone silly. I know it's life proof, you know, but it's still fucking. Don't try too hard, you know? Are you recording this? What is this? You, hello? <laughs> we stop for the nights at Deepak's guest house. And as others rest, a few of us check out the nightlife. Cool bug. What 
only four. Whoa. I've not. It's got to be a breeding thing. Yeah. Well, they, Look at them all. How would you ever see that underground? Dude, that worm is. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby. Gabby, nice to meet you. I'd shake your hand, but... <laughs> <laughs> Here. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you want a pet him? No? He's afraid. He's afraid? He's afraid. No, nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Super, He's holding formless. him. If you, if you breathe long, also he afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please don't eat. Sorry, you Yes, yeah. yeah. Good is <laughs> <laughs> really want it. <laughs> 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 um, tell Geckos are incredible little reptiles. They can detach their tails and regrow them to distract predators. Adhesive powers of tiny hairs on their toe pads allow them to stick to hard surfaces. And with their toe pads and night vision combined, they're perfect nocturnal insectivores. You can do it. Just here. You don't have to hold them. Just go like this. Just like that. Oh. 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 You guys are such brats. Congratulations. This is Kepo from Himalayan Natural Mountain, Nepal Natural Kepo. From Zico Kesta House. If you want to talk. No, I don't want to talk. House geckos are attracted to urban areas for one reason in particular, lights. Lights attract moths and other insects of which geckos will feast on. So finding a gecko here in Deepak's guest house is a great sign, because it means no mosquitoes in my bedroom. We leave Deepak with his newfound knowledge of the importance of geckos, and we all get hyped for what will be the longest day of the trek. As we continue through the rainforest, wildlife surrounds us. Flycatchers sally for insects, water redstarts and blue whistling thrushes sing at the river's edge, and brown dippers forage in the rapids.
Stone step after stone step, we leave the rainforest behind. Welcome to the road Rhododendrons. Now higher in elevation, the rhododendrons harbor new species, such as sunbirds, bullfinches, and laughing thrushes. We rest and we wake before dawn to hike to Poon Hill for our first look at the mountains of all mountains. Our stay in Gorapani is short-lived, but we make the most of our view. Before you know it, we're on the last stop of our journey. Do you want me to coax him towards you? Gavin, he's right here. Do you see him? Mr. Miyagi would be disappointed in you. 
Oh, you got him. Never mind. You'd be proud. Look at that little guy. So this is a common garden lizard. Somebody did his research. Clote's versi color belongs to a family, Agamidae, which includes all Old World iguanas. And as their name suggests, they inhabit gardens and brushy areas feeding on insects. It can be found throughout most of tropical and subtropical Asia. The orange coloration on his head is used to attract a mate and also to terrify territorial males that would come and encroach on his home. I take it back. Can we name him Leonard? Leonard? <laughs> Pick a name, Spencer. I like Leonard more than Larry. Because then we can call him Leo for sure. Look at these claws. Oh, you're pissing off Leonard. Yep. Yeah. Yep, he's chomping. Oh, man. Look at those little claws. Perfectly adapted for climbing. He's licking your flesh. Yep. From his teeth. You're a little bratty lizard, aren't you? We'll let him go now. Come on. Hey. Parkour. As we explore Pokhara, a much more westernized city than Kathmandu, we find barn swallows nesting in shops. In Nepal, it's believed that if swallows choose to nest in your store, you will become very wealthy. At first, this idea seemed odd to me, but then I realized this held true for my own family. We are not millionaires by any means, but barn swallows used to nest in our shed on our blueberry farm which is what allowed us to live very comfortably today. In Nepal, almost every plant and animal is associated with a god or a power. Today, however, the culture that houses these beliefs is watered down, and they do not hold as strong as they once did. These practices can lead to strong connections between people and nature, and from those connections, the understanding of wildlife's value to the world. I'm not advocating for religious beliefs as a method of conservation, but for it being a launching point into the scientific research and conservation of our natural resources. We're at the end of our journey. Thank you for coming with us. Thank you for experiencing Nepal's wildlife, Nepal's people. And until next time, stay wild.